Jenna. I'm the park naturalist here at Bear Branch Nature Center and Hashua Environmental Center. And we are here in front of our aviary today to give you a little spiel about some of our awesome birds that we have here. Now we have all of these birds under multiple different permits through DNR and US Fish and Wildlife and the USDA. Uh, and they are all living with us because they cannot be returned back into the wild for multiple reasons. Uh, some of them have injuries from either flying into glass, getting hit by cars. Others are imprints, meaning that they were raised by people. And so all of these guys cannot be returned back into the wild. And instead we use them to be our amazing animal ambassadors for their species, teach people up close about how cool these birds are and what people at home can do to make sure that we don't get any more birds into our aviary here. Uh, these guys are one of the only species of raptors that you can tell just based on their coloration whether it's a boy or a girl. Other raptor species the only way that you can tell is the girls are usually bigger than the boys are. These guys you can tell it's a kestrel sitting up on a power line instead of a morning dove because of their behavior more than what they look like their size especially when you're going by pretty fast. They'll sit there and they'll bob their tail up and down that helps them with balance um, and then also they'll oftentimes be kind of doing a little head bob movement and that's because they're triangulating. So sometimes I can get her to do it if she's focusing on something she'll do yeah do a little dance uh, and what that's doing is she has her head stabilized so that whatever she's looking at she knows I know where it's at but the rest of her body can wiggle if it's windy things like that this is a full-grown bird um, she she is larger than a male would be too uh, by you know, maybe a half an inch uh, mainly as far as weight goes uh, she weighs less than like a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's very, very lightweight. Most of the time we're feeding her um, mice and sometimes her, her mice, like a mouse can outweigh her. Because um, again, and also with her missing her wing, less weight there too. But that shows how hollow those, you know, holy those bones are that allows the birds to actually get flight. As you can see with her, this wing she has, this wing she does not have. This little girl, she either flew into a window or was hit by a car. And in that case, uh, her wing completely shattered. So when you're thinking about bones, people, we can go get a cast and our bone will heal back up together. Bird bones, uh, you might have heard that they're hollow. They're not necessarily hollow where, you know, they have a hole through them. It's more like a sponge. Uh, there's a whole bunch of little attachment points. And so, a vet, a rehabber will do their best to try to set the bones, uh, but in her case it was so shattered that in order to save her life it had to be completely amputated off. Uh, she's still working on, you know, readjusting with her balance and everything, but she does pretty good. Now because of that amputation though, she can no longer uh, regulate her body temperature as well as she should because uh, she can't clamp her wings down. And so she lives inside of the nature center whenever it's a little chilly or windy or rainy. And then she'll come out and enjoy her outside mew, uh, which is her outdoor enclosure here at the aviary. Kestrels are cavity nesters. And so most of the time when people think about cavity nesters, uh, as far as raptors go, they're thinking about owls. Uh, tucked in a little hole, that sort of thing. You can set up owl boxes, um, but specifically for diurnal daytime uh, birds of prey, these kestrels, they love the, the nest boxes. It provides them a space. Um, now you have sometimes have to fight the other birds that want to move into, especially your invasive starlings, things like that. Um, but these guys are great parents. Once they find a spot, they'll build their nest. The female, as soon as she lays her eggs, that's then all that she does the rest of the time is she sits on those eggs and she takes care of the babies. Most of the time birds of prey are kind of changing the job uh, while dad sits on the nest, the mom will go out and hunt and then they'll swap. With kestrels, the female will stay on that nest. Uh, and it's now dad's job to go out and catch enough food for him, for her, and then for their nestlings uh, until the nestlings grow up. And then they'll fledge, they'll learn to fly, and then they're, they're gonna be on their own. Kestrel boxes are a great way to attract it. It's the whole, if you build it, they will come ev eventually. Uh, you do, it takes patience because they have to realize that the, the location, the opportunity is there. Um, but if you're providing, you know, more habitat, nesting, food sources, all that good stuff, uh, you can start seeing more of these guys around. These guys 
as any raptor, they're going after a, a food source, um, uh, meat, some sort of protein. These guys like small rodents um, and small birds, but they specialize on insects. So larger insects such as grasshoppers, uh, praying mantis, things like that. So when people put out pesticides and things like that, not only are you targeting the, the bug, but then you're also targeting everything up into that food chain. And so with more and more pesticide use for crops and things like that, um, we're, we're oftentimes finding a lot of ill birds or birds we don't even know about that are, you know, getting that inherent poisoning from that. Try your best if you have a garden at home to use more natural uh, pesticides, um, even something as simple as soapy water to spray on your plants um, instead of using harsh chemicals that is going to harm them. Let the predators kind of do their job. Uh, let these guys do their job. The less and less pesticides that we use, the more you're gonna be able to see these guys because there'll be more bugs for them to go out and eat.